Good morning. Many months ago, Obspot sent out a few cameras for me to try, the Tail Air and the Tiny 2 4K. Both are awesome cameras, and they've honestly been great additions to my setup. I do have a long-form video that covers my thoughts on the Tail Air, but only a short-form video on the Tiny 2 4K. Coincidentally, Obspot just also released the Tiny 2 Lite, which is a camera that is extremely similar to the Tiny 2 4K, but at almost half the price. Remember that for later. But that is actually not why we're here today. Obsbot also released a new product called the UVC to NDI adapter. This is a little box that takes the Tiny2 4K, which is a USB camera. Don't you dare touch me! Turns it into a network camera using NDI. I apologize in advance for the acronyms. Let me explain. UVC stands for USB Video Device Class. It is a standardized specification for how devices like USB cameras communicate over USB. It is what allows a USB camera to communicate with a computer. For example, you can't take like a regular USB camera and then plug it into an Xbox or a smart fridge to just add a camera. While the hardware is there and capable, there's still a software piece that needs to make that possible. NDI stands for Network Device Interface, and this is another specification for sending video over the network using IP. The UVC to NDI adapter takes a camera that was only able to send its video to a single source via USB into a networkable device that knows no bounds. I am untethered and my rage knows no bounds! Now, before I throw any more acronyms into your ear holes, please be advised that although I was not paid by Obspot for this video or any previous content I've produced up to this point, all of the Obspot hardware that is in this video was sent to me for free in exchange for content. I always grant the maker of a product uh, the ability to provide talking points, creative briefs, data sheets, but I maintain final cut of the video. They don't get to proofread it. They don't get to correct it, redact it. I'm not affiliate or partnered in any way, and this video is 100% mine. This video is an unboxing, first impressions, and kind of a setup guide on how to set this up for yourself. This is not a very detailed spec-oriented review, um, so if you're looking for that, you're not going to get it here. <laughs> this video is about the UVC to NDI adapter. However, they did send me an additional Tiny 2 4K to test with this adapter. Not the new Tiny, the, the, the old one, old one. So we're going to unbox that too. In the box with the Tiny 2 4K is a sexy little carrying case that I will defile with a knife at a later date for reuse. <laughs> The camera itself, a USB-C to C cable, a mounting adapter, and a USB-C to A adapter. Then in the other box is a user manual, the UVC to NDI adapter, a USB-C to C cable with a USB-C to A adapter. And that is it. So if I was a moist, shirtless, bald stallion getting ready for my weekly cam show and needed a webcam, I would take this camera, plug it directly into my computer with a USB cable, the computer detects the camera, Bob's your uncle. Instead, we're gonna use the magic of home networking to send this camera feed over the network. So when it comes to video cameras and networking, there are two main factors to consider, data and power. If you have ever purchased a Wi-Fi security camera for your house, you've set up both of these already. The camera plugs into the wall outlet, usually via USB cable and an adapter for power. And then you connect the camera to your wireless network, which is an invisible digital vessel for your data to travel in. And the wireless aspect is like the convenience of connecting the data. While that's great for security cameras, it's not great for cameras that are pushing 4K 30, 4K 60 video. You know, a hardwired connection is a much better suited uh, vessel for high resolution, high frame rate video. Which means we need this. You've probably seen this before. Typically called a network cable, ethernet cable, patch cable. There's many different versions of it. Uh, these are used for connecting devices to a network. Most of the time for data only, at least in residential. Some network switches, like the one that I have here behind me, uh, have something called PoE. Acronyms! Fuck yeah! PoE stands for power over ethernet. And when enabled, a network switch can power the device as well as send data to it. This is awesome because you can just use one cable for this type of installation and you don't need to worry about getting separate power with other cabling. This is very common for security cameras, for wireless access points and more. This makes this setup extremely easy. Plug one end of the network cable into a device that provides power over Ethernet. Uh, my switch automatically detects if PoE is needed, so I don't need to log into the management portal to enable it. 
plug the other end of the network cable into the NDI adapter, and then plug the camera into the UVC to NDI adapter using the included USB-C to C cable. And if Jesus loves us, the camera should light up. Nice. Now that the camera was powered on, it was now time to see if it was alive and if the feed was even working. My first instinct was to load up OBS Studio as I knew that I had some sort of NDI plugin installed. For whatever reason, it didn't find an NDI source on the network. And that's when I kind of started to remember that the old NDI plugin for OBS was possibly depreciated. Uh, so then I just opened up the dedicated app, NDI Studio Monitor, which is a free application that comes from the NDI Tools 5 suite. Within that app, I checked the list of active NDI feeds and there it was. I started to do a clap test to see what the latency was like. And I completely forgot that this was an AI pan tilt zoom camera with gesture control. So it started moving all over the place, which then I got distracted and I just started playing with for the next five minutes. Sweet. So the camera is plugged into the same switch as the recording PC that it was sending the feed to. So let's do another test. I'm going to move the NDI adapter out to the workshop where I have another tiny two 4K setup. I've actually already have this here because it's how I monitor my two 3D printers and the AMS uh, just allows me to check in on it from time to time because the cameras that are built into the printer suck. So unplugging the original USB cable and then plugging in the USB cable that goes back to the NDI adapter. Under this desk is another eight port managed ubiquity switch that has PoE. So I unplugged the original USB cable, plugged in the new USB cable that went back to the NDI adapter. And then that has the network cable that goes back to the ubiquity switch. Quick note, as soon as you plug in the NDI adapter, you hear the fans spin up immediately. They're not loud, but it was noticeable enough. When I moved it from my office to my workshop, it was actually too hot to hold. I decided to check the temperature on it. Holy butt cheeks on a stick. It gets really hot really fast. The cool thing about NDI is it is quite universal. As soon as a video feed is available on the network, almost any device can see it. Uh, I decided to grab my iPad to download my favorite NDI viewing app, which is called Stream Monitor for NDI HX. But while looking for it, I noticed that there was a few other apps for NDI as well. One that was using, I think, a stolen picture of Pokimane. Weird. Anyways, the app I actually went looking for worked exactly as I had planned. I checked that same app on my iPhone and it worked there as well. Oh, there's audio. I didn't realize that. While I was sitting there, I tried to load both the OBSBOT iOS app and the iPadOS applications just to see if the camera could be detected on the network for control using the app. And I wasn't able to find either of my devices. So I'm just assuming that that isn't a feature. Uh, maybe I should have read the manual first. So I went back to the recording PC, found the IP address of the camera, and then I found the landing page by just putting the IP address into a web browser. When I first loaded up the OBSPOT software on my recording PC, I couldn't find the camera. It was only finding the tail air that I had back here. And then within like the next minute or so, it automatically found it, but I couldn't control all of the things that I normally would be able to control from the app. So I resorted back to the manual, found that using the landing page was one of the preferred ways to go about it. And then boom, the control interface for the camera lit right up. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, flash a titty. <laughs> Quick note, there are default credentials for accessing this camera over the network. It is admin and admin, both with capital A's, just to let you know. Once I got in, I was able to control all aspects of the camera, even though it was 150 feet away in another room. Honestly, up until this point, quite the seamless experience. Could have been even more seamless had I read the manual first, but I'll never do it. A few thoughts on this setup as we wrap this up. Earlier in the video, I said this, but at almost half the price. Remember that for later. The Tiny2 4K is $320. The NDI adapter is $300. If you wanna use the PoE feature, you need to have a beefy networking switch ready to go that has power over ethernet, or else you need to find a different way to power this and that might be more money. With tax, you're looking at well over $600 US for a single network camera. That is a lot. However, now that the Tiny2 Lite is here, which is a camera with very similar specs to the Tiny2 4K, that's only $180. So paired with the NDI adapter, that is coming out to about $478 US. Again, that is still a lot of money for a single network camera. 
Now, it is a 4K pan tilt zoom network camera, so you need to consider what exactly you need out of this setup. And I also just learned during this edit that you can pair the remote control with the NDI adapter and then just use a remote to control that, throw that in, you're at $527. All that to say, I'm gonna need more time with testing before I start recommending this kind of setup, but I love the functionality of turning a USB camera into a network camera, and I hope this trend continues into the future.